All right, hello everybody. Here we go, growing mold. This is part B. All right, so it just came out of the exponentials function, and here we did 3.2 applications, and we just did Lake Victoria, and now we are at 3.2 again. We did A, 1 through 9, and here is growing mold part B. All right, so hopefully you gave this a try on your own, but let's see what we got. We'll do these first five, and we'll see if we get to part C on this one. All right, so mold can spread rapidly. Here we go. And students at Magnolia Middle School. And the students wrote the equation M equals 50 times D, uh, 3 to, to the D power. All right, so it's saying what is the area of the mold at the start right, so of the experiment. And what I'm looking for here is the another way for looking for the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is of our equation f of x equals a times b to the x power and I'm looking for that a there right so what is the y-intercept or what's my a value so what is the a value if we look at that equation that they wrote there they wrote m equals 50 times so that 50 is equal to the start of the experiment um, so that is that happens to be how many square millimeters at the start. All right, so I'm looking for the y-intercept there. So far, so good. What is the growth factor? All right, so looking at the growth factor, I'm gonna highlight this one in green here, or that B value is the growth factor, as we've said before, All right? That's my growth factor there. And on that equation, we have m of d, I'll write it in function notation, 50 times 3 to d power, and that growth factor happens to be that number 3 right there. So what is the growth factor? The growth factor is 3. All right, so we got the y-intercept, we got the growth factor, given the equation. All right, so hopefully so far so good. Let's see what else we got on these slides. Um, using that equation, again, I, re I rewrote it rather than writing m equals, I wrote m of d equals just to keep it in function notation, and I wrote the d on the outside rather than the inside of the parentheses. It means it's exactly the same thing. All right, so what's the area of the mold after five days? All right, so hopefully you have a graphing calculator here, but function notation means m of 5, okay, equals 50 times 3 to the fifth power. So remember, whatever you plug in there goes in for D, and it's, and it's exactly what I did. All right, and recall that this is uh, order of operations, so the 3 to the fifth power, this piece here, would go first. So if you want to do 3 to the fifth power in your calculator, that's fine. We'll just do it mentally. And so far we have 50 times 3 to the fifth power is 243. And then we can do the multiplication of multiplying by 50, and we get an answer of 12,150. So what's the area? And this is, I believe, in millimeters squared. So 12,150 millimeters squared is what's being occupied here by this uh, growing mold. All right. You could also put this one, if you have the uh, TI-84 calculator or many calculators will be able to do this. You could, do, you could put this all in one keystroke as well and get down to the final answer, all right? And uh, that would still give you 12,150. All right, on which day will the area of the mold reach 6,400 millimeters squared? All right, so on which day? This one's gonna be a little more challenging, so they want to, they're, they're giving you the output here, right? So this is your output, and they're saying, when will 50 times 3 to the x power or d power here equal 6400. Alright, so this is going to require a little more than just being able to solve this. You're going to need a little algebra 2 here, and but I'm going to show you how to do this on Desmos. So we're going to do two equations. We're going to write y1 equal 50 times 3 to the third to the d power, and then our second equation here will be 6400 and again um, I'm going to do this on Desmos if we were in class I'd show you this, do this on the calculator and if I find a good calculator app I will definitely show you all right so these are two equations and then I'm going to go to bring this to Desmos here all right so here's Desmos 
So our first equation was y equals uh, 50 in parentheses 3 and I'm going to put x power uh, shift 6 and then to the x power you could have put m and d and would have made the same difference but I'll just stick with y and x just swap into 2 and then the second equation here so here's our equation we can't see everything yet okay but we want to know how we'll adjust the graph momentarily and then we want to do our second equation of y equals 6400 and there's that. So we obviously don't see the y equals 6400. Uh, please remember that's a horizontal line. So what am I really looking to do here? So if this is my, so if I have a graph, right here's my x, here's my y. If I graph 50 times d to 3 power, it's going to float up and shoot up exponentially. Uh, 6400 is going to be a straight line going this way. All right, I'm, uh, I'm not including the anything outside the first quadrant because we're talking about days so this is my days and my days will be always in the first quadrant here and and then the growth which would be my millimeters squared which will also be greater than zero so everything's gonna be in the first quadrant here all right so something to consider when we're doing the Desmos here okay so back to uh, Desmos so I need this to go up to, so right now I'm at 10, I need this to go to at least 6400. So let's see if I can find that graph there first, um, 6400. So I'm going to hit this uh, wrench here and my x-axis again. So this is going to grow pretty quickly. Uh, so let's see what we got. So negative 5, so this is, I'll just put negative 5 there, that's fine. And I'll put, uh, I'll put 30 here. And the step is going to be by ones, okay? And then my y-axis, again, I, this is set, set to negative two. Um, that's fine. I'll do negative five. And I need to go, I need to get to 6,400. So I'm going to give myself a little extra room there and do 7,000. And I'm going to make my steps, um, I don't know, I'll do a steps of 500, I guess, or maybe 1,000. See, we'll see how it comes up. As I put the 500 in, you can kind of see the graph already. Um, if you did a thousand, let's see, a uh, thousand doesn't change so much, but you can definitely see it there, right? So now we have both my equations here. I can move my graph up a little bit, but the main part is I can see the y equals 6400. I can see the graph 52, 50 times 3 to the x power, and I can see exactly where they intersect. So their intersection there is 4.417 comma 6400. All right, so I'm going to steal that for a second. All right, let's steal this. Come back here and oop, no, I don't want that. Let's try one more time. Steal this graph here. All right, so this is the graph we have. Perfect. Come back here and we'll paste this thing in. So this is the graph I have here. And we'll replace that. So on which day will the area of the mold reach 6,400? Well. On day 4.417, um, so we're going to have to increase that and say approximately the fifth day of doing the experiment and the recording. All right, so that's an option to do it on Desmos. Again, we can do this on the calculator. Uh, if we did this on the calculator, you put these both into your calculator. Once you've established your window, similar to what we did on Desmos, you would, you would then hit second trace or second calculate, go to number five where it says intersection, hit the enter button three times, and then you will get your 4.417 comma 6400. All right, so there's uh, part B, numbers one through four, and I think there's a number five here. All right, so suppose you started with 25 millimeters squared, how would the equation change? Uh, so again, our equation was M of D is equal to 50 times three to the d power and if i started so here's my keyword that i started with 25 millimeters that 25 would replace my 50 and it grew in the same way as then in the problem before um, so now everything is going to be exactly the same except in part a here my equation would be i'm going to choose a different color here m of d is equal to 25 times 3 to the d power. And then how would the graph change? Um, not much change. It's going to grow the same exact way, except rather than starting at, rather, rather my y-intercept here being at 50, I'm going to have a y-intercept here at 
25, and then it'll shoot up in the same manner of getting three times bigger each time. All right, so that's part B, numbers one through uh, five. And while we're at it, since we're only at 10 minutes into the video, let's go a little further. This is part C. All right, so here it says an equation that represents an exponential function can be written in the form of f of x equals a times b to the x power. All right, so perfect, where a and b are constant values. Yes, a is, is given, b is usually given as well. What is the value of b in the mold equation? So we're referring back to the equation again, and we just said the b value is going to be uh, 3. That's the rate at which it's growing. Um, what, does it, what does it represent? It is the growth factor. And on a visual piece here, as you're Think about an xy table. Right, as your x is increased by one, right, as the days increase by one, my growth factor, the a value was 50, I believe. And to get to the next one, I'm going to multiply by three. That's what that growth factor is going to do for my equation. Every time I'm going to multiply by three and then multiply by three again, and then you'll be able to go down and get as far down as you get. So if you just did 50 times 3, you'll get 3, 150. Uh, times 3 again, you'll get 450. And then times 3 again, you get the 1350. Dot, dot, dot. That's what the growth factor does. All right, and does it make sense in this situation? Sure, why not? And what is the value of A in the mold equation? And we did that again. So the value of A here was, again, it was M equals... 50 times 3 to the d power, and where are you starting your equation? Uh, the value of a is, again, the y-intercept, right? Graphically, you have to have a 0 in for your x, and whenever when x is 0, whatever your y is, this happens to be your y-intercept. And in this equation, there it is. So again, I would write this as m of d equals rather than m equals, uh, but that's pretty much it for the growing mold here. Um, and what else we got? This will move us into the studying snake population, but let's take it nice and slow. We'll stop here at 12 minutes. Today we'll keep it nice and easy. And tomorrow we'll do the uh, studying snake population. Uh, what I would do now is just go back, make sure you look through everything from 3.2 that we've done so far, the Lake Victoria experiment um, example, and the growing mold example. And then if there's any more questions, please post. And then we'll start the uh, studying snakes population in the next one and then after that we'll start talking about growth factors and growth rates in uh, lesson 3.3 all right so see you guys in another day we'll keep posting these and keep posting questions look forward to hearing from you guys see you later